My name is Daniel Soria. I am 37 years old, and I belong to the Sayago Ward in the Uruguay Montevideo West Stake. I am currently serving in the church as a second counselor in the stake presidency. I have had the blessing of serving as a full-time missionary in Córdoba, Argentina, as a young man president in the Sunday School, in the Elders' Quorum, as branch president, and as a bishop. I married Sandra Oliveira in the Buenos Aires, Argentina temple on August 12, 1994. We have three children, Martin, Carlos, and Lucia. I was baptized at the age of eight. Back then, only my mother, Noelia, was a member of the church. My father, Juan Carlos, still had not made the decision to be baptized. For several reasons, I gradually stopped attending church. The great distance that we lived from the chapel, the number of siblings, all younger than me, among uh, other difficulties, might be considered all good reasons. As the years passed, other activities filled my life, school, soccer, friends, etc. When I turned 12, I had become, without realizing it, a less active. I didn't know much about the gospel, nor did I have a strong testimony. I didn't even know what that meant. One day, like any other day, uh, a miracle happened, which years later I realized would change my life forever. Two young men, Hugo and Andres, came to my house and introduced themselves as the president of the deacon's quorum and his first counselor in the ward to which I belonged. They invited me to play soccer at the chapel the following Saturday and didn't say anything else. They just left having said the magic words, play soccer. Well, the day came and I invited my brothers and a few friends to go to the chapel to play with me. When we arrived, I found that only Hugo and Andres were there. I asked them, is it only you? Aren't there any more people? They who were apparently used to only having two simply said, yes, only us. We played, had fun, and when we all left, they casually asked, will you come to the chapel tomorrow? I answered them with a simple yes. The next day I went with my mother to the chapel. It had been more than three years since the previous time I had been there. Hugo and Andres were outside of the building waiting for me, and I could see the happiness on their faces when they saw me. They introduced me immediately to the bishop, to the young man president, and to the seminary teacher, three men that would be fundamental in my life. They were my friends. They taught me. They gave me their examples. They were my missionaries, the ones that helped me to discover a whole new world, hidden treasures. I felt the joy that comes from living the gospel. And from that point on, I was able to walk with my own light and with my own testimony. I thought I just was a number on a piece of paper. I didn't know that I was uh, ready to return. They didn't know, and for sure the leaders didn't. Only the Lord knew, and thankfully because they magnified their calling in the priesthood and did their part, I can be in the church today. Years later, I moved to uh, the other end of the city and mostly lost contact with my friends. I went to a new chapel, made new friends, and continued growing physically and spiritually. The time of a mission arrived, and I went. They sent me to the Cordoba Argentina mission, as I said before, which was one of the most incredible experiences of my entire life. Just after arriving, in one of my first uh, preparation days, walking through the downtown of the city of Córdoba among a world of people coming and going, we passed by two other elders. And uh, what joy did I feel when I realized that one of them 
was my dear friend, my deacon's quorum president. When Ugo saw me, he was also surprised, and without saying anything, he gave me a big, big hug. I was able to understand how Alma and the sons of King Mosiah felt when they were reunited after so many years. We, like them, continued as brethren in the Lord. Many years have passed since that moment. Today, my oldest son is a deacon's quorum president in my ward. With all of the same possibilities of continuing to bless the lives of other young men belonging to his quorum. I have a great testimony of this gospel, of the priesthood that we hold. My life is the fruit of the love and service of many brothers and sisters. My assignment is that through the priesthood, I can also be a blessing to many generations, as it states in my patriarchal blessing. Like many stories, mine started with a young boy. His name was Hugo, and he was 12 years old. He was my deacon's quorum president.